And so these questions fall away. Because they don't have answers anyway. You can bang your head on the wall for years and you will not get that answer. Because there isn't an answer for that. That's the whole beauty and Leela of this existence. That the answers are not there. That the questions fall away. Namaskar. Thank you for the chance to speak with you today. I was very fortunate to have found your, your teachings early in my Advaita Vedanta journey. I feel like you saved me from taking a very long path that wasn't leading me where I wanted to go. I've been trying to follow the practice of surrender that you teach by bending and, and focusing inside and asking myself, what would my soul say? And waiting for an answer. I haven't heard it, but I, I wait a time of silence and then I imagine what my soul would say and I try to follow it. In that time in my work as a doctor and in my life as a father, there are times when I feel like I'm more present, I'm more here with the people in, in a deeper and more meaningful way than before. So I feel like I've been deepening in that, but I don't have that physical impulse that I've heard you describe. Mm -hmm. The closest thing that I've experienced, I guess I'd call it like twinges from my conscience, just a feeling of, of wrongness or maybe rightness, more wrongness in response to the questions that I'm asking. And I was hoping you could help me understand the difference between listening to the soul and, and listening to my conscience. And I'd be grateful for any guidance you, you have for me. Firstly, what is important to understand is that this entire exercise just makes you much more aware, present and conscious of every action you're taking, or at least the larger, more, let's say, valuable actions, or what you consider to be the valuable actions, which in and of itself is very different from stepping back from everything and observing everything as the neo advaitins bring, because they forget to bring the element of surrender, which is a very, very crucial part of Advaita. Advaita's fundaments are based on surrender. And that part has been nicely forgotten because it's the uncomfortable part. And the cherry picking has resulted in, especially the Western approach to Advaita, which is therefore called Neo Advaita, a movement and a body of knowledge which is focused on detachment without the surrender. So, yes, you are very fortunate that you don't have to take that route which would lead to you distancing yourself from and detaching from the material reality of your existence. That, especially since you're a doctor, if you're a medical doctor, is not a very advisable thing for your patients at least. The sadhana that is spoken about here, when you start this process, your thinking will start to question where is this answer coming from? Is it the conscience speaking? And if it is the conscience, then of course it is a result of your socialization, so it cannot be trusted. If it's not the conscience, then is it the ego? That's the other question that will arise. And if it's not either of the two, then what is it? Is the third question that would arise. And so you can spend a lot of time in conceptual gymnastics. What is important to see here is that the very fact that you're asking that question to your Source, to your Divinity within, or to the Source of Truth within, is in and of itself an exercise in increasing awareness and consciousness. It's a widening of the consciousness where you're not just focused on conceptual results of rational, you know, processes, but you are looking, you're, you're waiting for that whiff, for that scent of the Divine, or for that impulse of Soul. It is better to wait for that impulse and not have it, than not to wait for it at all. It is sadhana, see. In earlier times you had to walk through, you know, jungles for weeks on end to reach a Guru at all in the first place. And then when you reached the Guru, the Guru said, OK, now stand on one foot. Then you had to stand on one foot for ten years, before you even received any kind of anything. You had to do seva of the Guru, you had to cut wood and burn 
hundreds of logs before you even got a word from them. So when you have received this, and if it resonates, then hold on to it tight, because it will take you to a state which may not even be what you think it'll be. But it'll certainly be a better place to be than where you are before you start out. And I think you're smart enough to understand that, otherwise it won't even resonate. So the disappointments along the way generally come when the surrender is not sweet enough. It's about bending down, it's about literally... In fact, in the, in the immersives, we show these physical Kriyas, because they connect you with that sense of... of the Divine within. I mean, you are from a Judeo-Christian background, probably raised as either Protestant or Catholic, or raised in an atmosphere of that. I know that nobody really is that religious anymore, especially if they're sitting in this satsang, but still, those are the influences of the culture in which you live. They're strong, powerful, ancient, or old at least, if not ancient, influences. And they have put somewhere in you the, the fear of actually connecting with Source. Because that's what religion has done, it has removed, you know, the Divine and placed it outside. You have to put it back in. And keep on piercing, piercing. And the approach has to be surrender. Surrender is enough. Even if you don't hear anything for 10 years, most of the students who have taken up this sadhana very seriously and really do seva and, you know, are really also real deep seekers, they start at one point to feel that center. It comes. And it's even felt as a sort of an impulse. It's a deep knowing of what is the action to take. It's all about the physical, material action. This is not about conceptual ideas of detachment, or even a conceptual idea of surrender. The surrender is actually material, it's physical. You bend down a lot. You offer up the materiality. You offer up the emotions when life is too tough, you know? And when the emotions well up and there is... there is suffering, you offer it into that fire within. Then it burns brighter and it warms you. When the conceptual is taking off in a hundred directions, which definitely in your case happens, you say, OK, now it's enough. Now I... I throw all this out and I just bend, I bend down. And then you go and you feel the... you feel the Source within. Somewhere there is a core to you, whether it's called Soul or Source, or whether it's made up of proteins from your genes, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You'll never find out, in a conceptual way, what it is. No one has ever found out what it is. And no one will, because that is a conceptual exercise. What happens is that your consciousness expands, and it expands beyond the conceptual, where these conceptual questions actually fall away, because the consciousness is now in different states, you know? It's not anymore just conceptual, it's transformative. It's in a bliss state in a unity consciousness state. It moves up and down, it expands, and so these questions fall away. Because they don't have answers anyway. You can bang your head on the wall for years, and you will not get that answer, because there isn't an answer for that. That's the whole beauty and Leela of this existence, that the answers are not there, that the questions fall away. Actually, surrender mode is what it's all about, and just being grateful to be alive, being here. And not grateful in a religious sort of sense, but grateful in a sense of presence, in a sense of awareness of Self. That's a difference. So that's how you proceed through this life. 
and you do kriyas, some you hear of in the satsangs, you do them and you expand your consciousness like that the suffering also reduces because the way you look at that suffering changes, obviously but without detachment, rather you're more just present and joyous and in touch with Source and Self and yes, you remind yourself of this every day it's not something that's just going to drop from the sky, no that socialization has taken so many years, you know how is it going to just go away in one day? and the Life Divine is not after you pass away, it is here and now you know that already, you have that experience I can see it in your face that you've had that experience now it is about being with that experience, being one with it and, and also allowing yourself to have that experience allowing it Thank you.